Welcome to this week's edition of Focus on Connecticut. I'm Tom Appleby. Still a lot of activity up at the legislature. Lots of bills still being debated. Uh, today we're going to talk about some of those key issues. Let me introduce our two guests. They're both state representatives. Uh, Kim Rose is a Democrat from the 118th District, which is Milford. And Fred Camillo is a Republican, 151st District, which is Greenwich. Thank you both for coming by. I appreciate it. And special thanks to, to Mr. Camillo, who has uh, been under the weather these days. So it was a, a big effort. I thank you. The, the big talk this week, at least, is gambling. It's sudden, last year, the word Kino was something no one wanted to even speak, let alone vote on. For at first it had been proposed and then it was pulled back and, and, and lawmakers would look at me like this is just, this is not even an issue. Now, <laughs> budgets are tight, Kino has raising its head, I won't characterize it as ugly necessarily. What do you think about it? I'm in favor of Kino. Uh, it's offered in Massachusetts, very successful. I think if people are playing the lottery and they're gambling, they're going to gamble. I don't know that it's going to increase gambling in Connecticut or encourage people to, to gamble. And it's also a very, very big issue with my VFWs and private clubs. They're all lobbying for that. So they would get a piece of the action. <coughs> Exactly. Not just the state lottery. This is, by the way, a state lottery issue. The, the state is saying our current lottery games are, are losing, the public is losing interest in them, so this would revive interest in gaming to some degree. Sure, yeah, and I think this is a little bit different from the expansion of casinos. That, uh, it's another uh, concept that's going around up there, which I always thought was certainly worthy of debate, but then I was reading uh, somewhere where uh, when the casinos went in up in northeastern Connecticut, a lot of the smaller businesses who had hoped to do really well went out of business. Around them, you mean? Yes, because people were just staying, everything is offered at the casinos. They were figuring people would, would take a break and come out. And having gone up there a couple times for conventions, I could see why people stay in there, because there's everything. They're, all the restaurants are there. They're, you know. So uh, that I would be a little bit more skeptical of, of this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more open to. I remember when, about 15 years ago, maybe more, the proposal for a casino in Bridgeport was being debated and hotly debated. Uh, there was the argument it would be a wonderful thing for the city of Bridgeport, all the employment and all the stores around, and others were saying, no, it's going to be a walled fortress. And I, I, I kind of gone, uh, did a 180 on that. I was uh, for that years ago when that first was proposed. But having heard some of the experiences that have gone up to north of us w with the casinos that are already here, I'll be very, very sc uh, careful because right now small businesses are taking a hit all over. And while I certainly believe in the free market, <coughs> and that means I'm not going to uh, you know, discriminate against big box stores, uh, they certainly have a, a place here also, but if they all, they have the wherewithal to to crush the small stores, so we got to we have to be a little bit more protective, I think, to our smaller businesses. And the uh, state lottery commission is predicting that uh, after expenses in the first year, Kino would bring in five million, and then by the third year, thirty million dollars. Opponents are saying <coughs> this is just another entry or it, it's, it's even more addictive than the lottery games where you scratch and sniff or whatever. But this, in this case, you're sitting at, the, at a, uh, a bar or a table in a restaurant <coughs> and you're playing this game. Your kids see you do it. They might get into it. No problem that, with that. that. That could be an issue. I can, I can understand concerns with that. I, I still think that uh, it's something that we need to do at this point in time. We need to look at the income mm -hmm. and uh, be competitive with our neighboring states. We have people going over the borders up into Massachusetts to play. And this is what the, uh, the owners of the two casinos we have now, the two tribes, are arguing for uh, in terms of the three casinos they want to put in around the state. Two of them in Fairfield County, by the way, one up in I-84 near Danbury they're proposing, and one near Bridgeport in I-95, and also one near Hartford on I-91. Uh, but it, they would be run by the, uh, those tribes. Any problems with them expanding? Again, I, would, I do now have a concern because of what I've heard what's going on. There's always a blueprint of what happened, you know, something that's happened somewhere else. And, and this is right here in our state. And if small businesses are telling us they've had to have closed their doors because of the casinos, you know, again, I'm a free market guy, but 
if we, you know, that's why we have antitrust laws. We're there to, to protect small businesses, to at least give them a fighting chance. Because otherwise, left to the devices, sometimes they will get eaten up in the free market by a, a bigger company. So I'm very skeptical about allowing expansion now, a little bit more open minded to Kino. Expansion of the casinos? Good question. Um, there's a lot of talk about the job loss if we don't expand the casino with the big MGM project coming into Springfield. The casinos are now talking about 9,000 jobs and also that would trickle down into vendors, of course, that are servicing the casinos. Um, the problem is if we do allow this one casino to come in, the, it opens it up to several more in the state. So we're looking very closely at that issue right now. Going to take a break. Let's look closely when we come back at, at some of the budget problems above and beyond trying to get revenue from gambling, what we're going to do uh, in this session. Back in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to Focus on Connecticut. It is no question that this state is struggling with trying to make its budget and still support services and education and so on. Your party today, we're taping this Friday morning, and in just a couple of hours they will be releasing their the Republican <coughs> budget. Tell us a little about it. Well, it's uh, probably not supposed to say anything before it's released, but certainly... This will not air until Saturday. Exactly. Uh, some of the things it does, in a nutshell, it, it reprioritizes again. We restore a lot of funding, uh, especially to DDS, to a lot of the social services. Uh, we also say where you can actually fund some of this stuff without raising taxes. <coughs> um, you know, whether it's you know, the earned income tax credit or you know, uh, going back to the governor who promised to find $253 million when he did one of the union agreements a few years ago, and it, ne it never was realized. It, he never found it. Uh, it's going back and saying, well, you gave us your word on this. You need to find that $253 million. Um, you know, his raises for over uh, 200 members of his administration at a time when we're cutting the budgets of, of a lot of social services and nonprofits, um, the funding for that, we're saying no. Not now. I'm not saying they don't need a raise or they don't deserve one, but not now. Everybody has sacrificed, but certainly given your own people in your administration raises retroactive at a time when everybody else is, some are even facing elimination, some programs. Uh, that is, is something that we would not, we're going to ask that the not happen. So we, it's, a, it's a pretty long document. I don't have enough time, but mm -hmm. certainly it, I think people would, uh, are going to be happy when they see it unveiled. There are a lot of people who are unhappy with the cuts that the governor is proposing. We, this week we covered a, uh, a, a protest at the Capitol over uh, cuts to autism centers where uh, people are, uh, can go during the day. And it, it it's, could be gone if the, the governor's proposals go through. Tough for Democrats to make those kinds of cuts. Tough for anyone. We were handed a very difficult budget this year and uh, we have to be creative. I think that there's going to be cuts we need to try to level them off so that one particular department has a $450 million cut to DDS. Uh, that's unacceptable at this point. And we need to look at the revenue streams, new ways to increase our revenues. Like taxes? Uh, on the table is taxes and certain income brackets. That's certainly something that's, that's being looked at right now. Not in your proposal? I don't believe so. No. Um, Again, we've, and, and I, I agree with uh, Representative Rose, the, you know, a lot of these cuts are not acceptable because what we're there for, government, is to really to protect the most vulnerable. And that's what we're all, we're all trying to do. And I, believe, I don't believe the governor in his heart wants to do this either. Uh, I, what I fear is, what he's already done is, you know, hey, I've done it, you deal with it now. And if a budget comes back that's voted on that has taxes all over the place or on you know, certain brackets, uh, he could say, well, you know, I, I gave my word this time because I raised your taxes last time and before I even got there, there was a big, huge tax increase. And that hasn't worked. We're still lagging in, uh, com uh, compared to the other 49 states. And we're trying. We're really trying to get some good bills you know, out of commerce. And it's not easy, but certainly we're, we're really trying. And, and those tax increases have not helped. What, what we're finding out is those companies, especially in Fairfield County, that don't have to have a physical presence here, 
a lot have already moved and some are going to move and you know, we're just trying to retain what we have and also recruit people because we say this all the time we have such a beautiful state it's an ed educated citizenry where the proximity to Boston and New York is there. It, we have shoreline, we have countryside, we have great institutions, uh, learning institutions, but people are still moving. And that's borne out by the fact we've, you know, we lose congressional, we lost a congressional seat, we may lose another one. So the tax increases, in my opinion, don't work. We have to figure out a way to make do what we have. And, and, and reprioritize it. I think the money said, you know, we'll probably talk about it later, but tolls is a, is a perfect example of, I think, going down the wrong road when there are other, other ways to do something. Well, since we've raised the, the issue, <coughs> what do you think of tolls? I'm in favor of tolls. Uh, you can't get in out of New York without paying them. Uh, I've surveyed my constituency. They are in favor of tolls. It's something that uh, we need to have that income revenue to fund the governor's transportation policy. And would this, <coughs> I know this is a sensitive issue for your community, would these be tolls, are you okay with tolls just on the borders <coughs> of Connecticut or throughout the state? No, I'd be in favor of b border tolls. That's a bit hot. Well, yeah, and, and, and with all due respect to any other representative from another town that's for them on the, because it's not in their, their backyard. So. What I'm saying is, as someone who lives there and lived right near the tolls, when we got rid of the tolls because of the big accident, the tragic accident was 87? In Stratford, yeah. <coughs> um, one of the stipulations for us receiving federal funding was that no new tolls went back, or if they did, the money derived from them didn't go to existing roads. That's why when you see the governor talk about pos the possibility of tolls, he's talking about expansion of the highways. Well, he, he hasn't said what it would cost to reclaim some land uh, through eminent domain. And also, what I'd like to see is two things. One, the mo leave the money <laughs> that's going to the Special Transportation Fund, which it's rated every year. This governor has rated it four years in a row. I know now he wants to do a, a lockbox. I'm all for it. But he's come to the table late on that. I want to see it done one or two years, see what happens if all that money from the gas tax goes in there and then also keep the way stations open 24 hours, which we've lost money since it's gone this over. This is for the, the trucks, yes. It's we're, going to, we're going to take a break. We'll continue <clears throat> with this issue because the governor made it his big issue, transportation, when he started the session. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Focus on Connecticut. I'm Tom Appleby. We're talking with two members of the state legislature, both state representatives from southwestern Connecticut. Let me reintroduce them to you. Uh, Fred Camillo is a Republican from Greenwich, and Kim Rose, a Democrat from Milford. Uh, transportation was the be-all and end-all of this session, of course, balancing the budget and many other issues, but this was going to be the year of transportation. The governor's talking um, something in the range of a 30-year plan, a hundred billion dollars to be spent, um, and in the next five years, 10 billion in state and federal funds. Is that still, I don't like a pun here, on track? Is it still going to happen? That's something that's probably being looked at with, within the Appropriations Committee and the budgetary process. Um, we have been poorly underfunding our transportation systems, our, our roads, our bridges. It's time that we start funding that, and I'm in favor of the lockbox uh, that the governor has proposed. Meaning any funding set aside for these projects cannot be touched and used for other things, which is, I think, what you were alluding to, the transportation fund in years past has been rated to balance De budgets. Yeah, dedicated funds, yeah. yeah. And I, I agree with the representative that uh, you know, a lot of our bridges are deficient, and ha I have the Morano Bridge in my, my, my district, named after my cousin, <coughs> who was the senator at the time when the bridge fell in, in Miami. So we're talking about the bridge on I-95 in yeah. the Greenwich, yes. And it always, it's always on our minds when we go over bridges. Uh, the roads are not in great shape, and th I think they do have, it's a priority. That's, a, that's another factor in uh, enticing businesses to come here quality of life, transportation, getting around, infrastructure. Um, but I'd love to see, again, the, the, the Special Transportation Fund left alone, see what that produces. And then also, let's go back, let's turn over the, the way stations back to the state troopers who did an unbelievably good job, not only <coughs> protecting us, which is a huge thing, especially on the borders, 
um, but also bringing in a lot of revenue. And I think if those two <coughs> things are done there, let's wait and see. Give it a year. But right now, I, if there's no, there's no uh, movement at all to get the, to turn it back over to the, uh, the, spe the state trooper. So it's just a wish. A hundred million dollars is a daunt hundred billion dollars is a daunting amount. When you go to your constituents, what was their response to the governor's proposal? To be quite honest with you, uh, I survey my constituents. I have a survey that goes out every week to them, and uh, they, I've heard very little on this transportation bill from them. That's interesting. I and mean, you've got a bridge that's been under construction for years now. and uh, I expect people will be glad to see that done and done the right way, but it, it's, it makes for difficult travel for many, many years, and it's, it raids people's pocketbooks. It does, and that, that's an issue. I mean, $100 billion is a lot of money. Uh, I think that maybe we need to lower that figure to be something more reasonable. Do you find that when you talk to your constituents, yeah, we've got to fix maybe the Murano <laughs> Bridge, but that one up in Milford, not, not such a big problem. Well, I think in, in Fairfield County, uh, a lot of people get frustrated because of this county sends up more <coughs> than the other six counties. So. Um, and what we get back sometimes is not, uh, not in line with what we put up there. So I think you get a little bit of that sometimes. Not everybody, but um, it's not, certainly they're, they're not, uh, I don't think they're that parochial where they're saying, well, just bring the money back here. They know that, you know, in some, some, some uh, quarters in, in Connecticut were considered part of New York. <laughs> but certainly uh, transportation is a, is a huge issue uh, in my district. In, in town and in Lower Fairfield County. Let me stick with transportation when we come back and just talk a little bit about Metro North and the latest report that came out that made many people just roll their eyes and say this is never going to get fixed. We'll talk about it right after this. Just a few minutes left with our guest, Metro North. A report comes out and it turns out the inspectors are not being inspected by their own people. They're pretty much on their own. No one ha they're not even uh, keeping <coughs> records of what they do. Did, did you just say, here we go again, when you heard this? Pretty much. Uh, I, we have many, many commuters coming out of Milford going into New York and uh, I, I see their Facebook posts. Here we go again, it's uh, another delay. <coughs> Uh, this is an issue that really needs to be addressed and addressed immediately. Do they look to you to do this? Yeah, I think they look to us because we're, we're elected in office, even though it's not our decision and certainly um, Connecticut itself, you know, with Metro North, we control about 35% of it, of the revenues and, 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 and the expenses. Um, and we don't even have a person on that, on that board, unfortunately. But, um, the new uh, head of Metro North came in and uh, I think put out a good, a good plan, but it hasn't been realized yet. And I just spoke with a friend a couple of weeks ago, grew up in Costco, loves it here, wants to get married and settle down here, but is now moving to New York because he said he's late so much and recently that his boss is saying to him, no one else is late. Some are coming from New Jersey. They're not late. And he doesn't want, he wants, he wants to keep his job. Mm. So he's going to move to New York. So we're going to lose a lot of the other things that he would have contributed to the community. And the governor put forth about I don't know, two months ago as part of this plan, he wanted to have the power to seize properties in and around uh, transportation hubs uh, and develop them in the way that the state thinks would be appropriate. That seemed to back off a bit when there was an outcry, but it's not completely gone. Talk a little bit about that. I've worked very closely on this particular issue. Uh, our train station happens to be located right smack dead in the center of our, of our town, and this would have been a, a huge impact if that had gone through the way it was. Uh, the, the eminent domain has come out. The local authorities now will have the, the uh, authorities, and so that I'm much more comfortable with that bill as it, it is now. Well, the bill that <coughs> was originally came out uh, obviously was a, a non-starter for most of us. Um, we want to keep local control. Uh, I understand the intent uh, of the, the, the bill, but uh, absolutely would set a terrible precedent and you would lose control over that. And 
you know, I come from a town that is, has really run itself pretty well since at least the 1930s, and uh, having losing any type of control like that, local control, would, would be a disaster because as it is now, we, you know, we fight over local issues in all our towns, all 169, but if you remove something there, people, who are they going to complain to? It's one level removed from them. So I think uh, I agree with the representative. We don't want that to happen, and uh, I'm, I'm surprised it's still, uh, still, uh, still alive. Even with local control, though, isn't there a sense that, well, if you know the right people locally, you can get your project through and people can lose the properties that have been in their families and for years? I would certainly hope that that's not the case. Uh, I trust my mayor, and I trust that he would do the right thing for the city of Milford and for the neighborhoods that surround the train station. I don't think that we don't have the infrastructure uh, or the available property by the train stations uh, <coughs> that I don't think <coughs> it's really going to affect Milford. I mean, eminent domain. Your train station is right in the, at the tip of Greenwich Avenue, which is the heart of the city. No, I had a, my uh, maternal grandparents had a home in Stanford uh, back in the mid '50s that was taken for '95. You can understand that. That's a public use, but not if something's going to be taken for eminent domain through ev eminent domain and for private development, even if it's for a good cause. I'm against that. I'm totally against that. I, don't, I think it violates the spirit of eminent domain. Well, I thank you. We've run out of time. I appreciate your coming by. Best of luck in trying to balance the budget and get, getting through on time in this session. We'll be following it. Thank you for joining us as well. Please stay tuned. The news continues.